Welcome, it's Bernadette here. I feel like a newsreader. I have all my notes in front of me. Hello, to welcome to this Facebook Live. And uh, this is the start of a series of Facebook Lives that I'm gonna be doing over the next five to six days. And I have some amazing content for you. If you are someone who is interested in starting an online business, but doesn't really know where to start, um, you might be looking for, um, you might already be in an online business and it's not really going the way you want to. Well, I promise if you stick with me um, over these live streams, uh, I'm gonna give you some real clarity. You're gonna get some real aha moments. And it is my shameless intention to inspire you and get you really excited about what's possible for you in an online business. Because here we are, um, last month of the year. This is a time of the year, I think, when um, well, I know I certainly do. You look back over the the past year and reflect on how's it gone, and like, how is your year going for you? Like compared to where you hoped to be when January one rolled round, twenty sixteen. You know, have you um, have you made some big bold moves this year? Have you have, have you um, expanded in your business in your life? Um, have you, are you doing new things? Have you had breakthroughs in your personal life? Um, are you where you want to be? Are you where you hope to be? And what I always want to do whenever I'm connecting with you through, um, Facebook lives, through webinars, other ways that I serve you is, um, I'm always interested in helping you to, to close the gap between where you are and where you want to be. That's simply what this is about. But I'm going to be speaking this week specifically about online business. And the reason I'm talking about online business is this is the business model that changed my life. So I've been in business. I don't really want to admit this to you. I've been in business for 20 years. It was 20 years this summer since I started my own business. And I've been writing my own paychecks ever since. But the life I lead today is very different from the business I started um, a few years ago. And that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about today because I think, hands down, absolutely the best business model for, um, for true freedom and flexibility is to have an online information empire. So I'm not talking about selling products on Amazon or eBay, I'm specifically talking about information and, and how a well-constructed information empire can make a huge difference to the people you serve and because you're then able to reach more people, you get to make more money. So today I'm going to be talking to you about um, the, the six reasons why I think that an online information empire is absolutely the best business model to get into. So let's start with the first one. And the first one is you can work from wherever. Um, I basically am able to run my business anywhere that this is. And actually sometimes I don't even need this. I can do it on my phone now. But... I like to have my laptop, this and an internet connection. That's all I need. So um, ironically, <laughs> um, now that I have this business that I could be running from anywhere in the world, I also have two school age boys. And yes, I know I could homeschool them and we could go, you know, traveling. We could probably travel for a year. And there are some people that do that. It's not the right choice for our family. So during term time, um, our, our life is, is here in Belfast in Northern Ireland, but when the holidays rolled round, as they will be in a few couple of short weeks, we love to take off. Um, so uh, our next vacation is in Portugal. We're flying to Portugal on the 22nd of December and I will be there until the 7th of January. And one of the reasons that I'm staying on a few days after the boys fly home is I'm actually going to be there working with clients in this amazing villa and bring, bring my clients to hang out. Um, and that's so even when I work with clients, I can do it anywhere I want in the world. But a lot of how I uh, do my business is done through webinars, through videos like this. And so it really doesn't matter where I am in the world. So you can work from wherever. And I was actually thinking today, like, where are the places that I've been running my business from over the last um, 15 years? I've been online. I realized I was I was in India. I was pregnant in India. Um, I and was running my business from there. It was a very successful month, I seem to remember. Um, I just launched a second ebook and we generated £15,000 in sales while I was in India doing a personal development course. Hawaii is another place that I've been to. Um, I remember my dad was taken 
um, ill in 2009 and my children were quite small at the time and I he had a really serious operation he was having a, a triple heart bypass and we live in Ireland and he and my mum live in Crete and so and he, he was actually in hospital in Athens and um, just at the drop of the hat you know it's no it's no mean feat to travel as a single mum with two young children um, you know at short notice like that and yet it was easy for me to do that without having a lot of drama in my business because I could simply bring my laptop with me. And I said to my team, look, you know, I've got some family stuff. I'm not going to be as available for the next week or so. But I was able to just keep my business ticking over or checking up on my business from my laptop from anywhere in the world. And um, so it's not even the, the glamour of being able to go to nice locations. Well, that is great. To me, it's the flexibility that you can work from wherever. And Sometimes I just like to get out and about and head to a local coffee shop and sit there and soak up the vibe and I'll be writing emails or, you know, working on new content while I'm there or even having conversations with team members there. And I know no other business where you have this flexibility. You know, so many businesses, you're tied because your client base is in a certain area or your um you have premises like maybe you know you're you physically you're doing printing and you need to be where your equipment is and yet an online information empire really affords true 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 freedom so that's my number one reason for being an online information empire the second one is huge and it is you can do the work once and then you get paid 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 so let me give you a little bit of background on me i was telling you that my business started out um 20 years ago and I always wanted to be my own boss. And I think that's probably a good thing because I think I probably am unemployable. And I wanted to be my own boss. And I was really passionate about selling. And I had learned a lot that actually improved my sales results. And even back then, I was really interested in, in freedom. And I saw getting really good at sales as being a way to um, really have true freedom in my life. And so I'd, I'd been learning it. And I ended up um, starting a sales training company and I worked for companies like Sony, Norwich Union there were back there, Viva Now, AIG. So I worked for some big companies and they used to hire me, um, sometimes for as little as a day at a time, sometimes it would be a longer contract where I would go in and I would deliver training to their sales team and you know, get the results and I was good at it and they did see a turnaround in their results and it was great. It had one major flaw it was a trading time for money business model. So the only time I got paid, I was getting well paid, but the only time that I was getting paid was when I was physically in front of my clients. And all of the things that I had to spend time on in my business to get those opportunities to be in front of their clients, I wasn't getting paid for that, but it was still taking a lot of time. And the other thing was, if I wanted to take time off or to work on other opportunities in the business, the income dried up. And so I experienced in that business this, feast and famine. And that, to me, is inevitable for anyone who is in a time-sucking service business. And so if you're caught in that trap, you know, I really want to say to you, first of all, I feel you, I've been there. But please, 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 please start to look at um, revenue streams that you can put in place inside and outside of your business to free yourself from that. And inside your business, a great way to do this is to create product streams. Because the beauty of a product is you can do the work once you create the product, but then there's no limit to how many you, you sell. So the first product that I created online was an ebook that launched, it was actually, I'll have to check the date because it was in December in 2004. So yeah, it's the 12 year anniversary of that ebook. And, um, the ebook, how long did it take me to write the ebook? Well, honestly, when all was said and done, I, and I really got to sit down and do it, it took me about three days of writing to write it all out. But I, let's be honest, there was some life experience and some resistance I had to work through as well to get to that point. So um, when I launched my first ebook, I sent out an email. I've been growing my list, and I'll be talking to you more about list building in an online business in a day or two. But I had built up a list and I sent an email out to my list and I went away for the weekend. I didn't even have a laptop back then, so I couldn't bring my laptop with me. Went away for the weekend to uh, hang out with my boyfriend. Facebook wasn't around then and nor was Twitter or anything like that. So there was no way I could like check in and see how sales were doing. 
when I came back on the Monday um, and checked, I could see that um, 16 orders had come in. And this was a product that was selling for about £70, so um, $100. And um, I was like, wow. You know, previously I would have had to have given a whole day of my time to earn that kind of money and I would have had to have tra travelled and stayed overnight at client sites and things like that and and, and so essentially traded time for, time for money and now I realised I had the potential to um, make money through leverage, not through life force because I realised there was no limit to how many of these ebooks I could sell. The only limit was how many people can I, can I reach and really from that moment that's when i was hooked on on using information and creating value because at the heart of any business online or offline money moves hands because there is a value exchange value is being created and offered by the deliverer by the salesperson that's being paid for by the the customer so i'll, I'll be talking a bit more about value and value creation uh, a, a bit later in this live stream but um, I just I realized at that moment that I had the potential to deliver more value to more people and um, that it didn't wasn't going to require me to burn out or expend a lot of my personal life force to do it. So I love the fact in this business you can do the work once and get paid, paid, paid. I'm going to have a cup of tea, a slurp of tea and I won't drink the whole cup. That wouldn't be a very good live stream, would it? You sitting there watching me drink tea. Although apparently someone did do a live stream recently which was just a candle. <laughs> they put it up for several hours, apparently. People were still tuning in and looking at a candle. Whatever floats your boat. Um, okay, third reason I love an online information empire as a business model is automation and systems. And what that means is you can fire, fire yourself and the people that you used to have to hire. So there was headlines in the news yesterday in the UK because um, a banking boss has identified that about 15,000 people are going to be um, rendered redundant uh, because t automation and technology can now do the work for them. And I, when I looked at those headlines, I thought, well, actually, that's a sad thing for the people who are um, l losing their income. It's actually a very exciting thing for those of us who know how to leverage the power of automation. And in the story I just shared with you when I sold my first ebook and came back to all of those orders um, the great thing about that was there was nothing more for me to do the orders hadn't just hadn't been sold they'd already been delivered because I, I have an automated system that immediately delivers the digital product to my customer so I didn't have to pay any money on shipping or handling I didn't have to hire a team member to pack up the product and make sure it got to the right person it can be fully automated. And these days I say system stands for save yourself time, energy and money. And so um, there's so much potential for automation that, look, I want to be honest with you. It's, it's, it's not like you're able to just set it and forget it. You, there's still some monitoring. You need to check up, as you would in any business, to make sure that things are running smoothly. But it frees you up tremendously. Okay. Next advantage of an online business is the low startup and operating costs. I did a webinar this week and we had someone come on the webinar who said, I'm really thinking about starting an online business. But for me, the, you know, the key question in my mind is what's it going to cost to get up and running? And my answer to that is, well, a lot less than if you were going to start a traditional bricks and mortar business like a hair salon or a coffee shop where you're going to have to go invest in premises in hiring staff, in stock, in fitting out, you know, the, the, the salon or the retail environment. Um, in those types of businesses, um, people have to borrow typically the capital to get started and don't really expect to see that back for maybe three to five years. The beauty of an online business is that really there's only one piece of software that you absolutely need to get started and that's your email list manager. And I'll be talking more about that in an upcoming uh, live stream. But in uh, with your email list manager, um, you that now can start collecting names of people who have raised their hands and expressed their interest in what you offer. And those list managers can start for as low as like 10 bucks a month. 
Um, and typically the price grows as you go along in your business, but th th that's really the only essential piece. And yes, you are going to need one of these, but you know, borrow one if you have to. So it's um, really low st startup and operating costs. And then the costs of operating. My accountant, um, who's been doing my accounts for four years, was you know impressed with how much of my business revenue is retained as profit. And a big part of that is because the operating costs are so low. Here I am, I'm in my home office at home. So there's one room in my house which is dedicated to my business. I don't have to have office premises. I don't have to have a warehouse full of stock. I don't have to have um, a place where my team, you know, come and work. I don't, I don't have those costs. I don't have uh, physical costs. I don't have anything tied up in stock. I don't have any money tied up in stock or inventory because everything is digital in the business. So um, the, the startup and operating costs in this type of business are, are very low. That's something that I love. Linked to that is also, excuse me, <clears throat> in an online uh, business, um, a headache for me and something that had been a real challenge in my previous business was employees. Because as my business grew, um, my sales training business grew, I now needed to start to hire help to help me run the business. So the first person I hired was just assisting me with admin and scheduling and making sure that I was in the right place with the right um, training slides and the handouts, etc. at the right time. Um, back then, seems unthinkable now, but incoming phone calls were a huge part of our business. We didn't, we weren't doing much business online. So I needed to have someone full time just manning the phone because one missed phone call could be missing out on tens of thousands of pounds worth of business for us. So, um, so that was the first uh, person I needed to hire. And then, and as the business grew, I needed to bring on uh, another salesperson. But I found, particularly with the salesperson, that I was actually taking more time managing them than they were actually bringing back in the business. And if you're in a situation where you're in a service business and you've, you've been looking to scale, you've been looking to fire yourself from parts of the business, you know how painful this is. Uh, when you, you, you bring on people and it's an expense to your business, and but you're actually, the real expense is not the payroll, it's your time and management. And I knew that that was something that I did not want. So um, the business I have now is set up. I have a team and I actually have um, about 10 people that I would say I'm connected with every single week in the business. We are all virtual and not one of them is my employee. So my entire team are um, subcontractors and they have their own businesses. They do other things for other clients, but they are working um, with me and we, we, we and they help me to get things done. And they, they take off things off my plate that aren't my zone of genius or aren't the things that I really enjoy doing. So um, this has been a great business. And, and what's exciting to me is that my team now are getting to live the laptop lifestyle too. So this benefit of working from wherever, it's not just a benefit for me, it's a benefit for my team. Um, two of my team are Australians who are you know, currently traveling around Europe, living the laptop lifestyle. How wonderful that they're able to make a difference, contribute to a business, um, earn a living and see the world. So um, you know, it's no, not only is it no employee headaches, it's actually a far nicer way of working with people in the business. And the final work thing, and this is the um, big one, I'm just glancing down here because I see there are some questions coming through, which is great. Penny has posted a question. So keep, keep those questions coming. And in a moment, I'll, I'll start handling those questions. So this is the big one. This is what I love about um, this type of business. You, you can deliver more value to more people. Now, um, there's a quote doing the rounds. I'm sorry, I can't remember her name. But if you remember, type it in the box below. Elon Musk's ex-wife, I think it was his ex-wife, um, she wrote a piece about what does it really take to be a billionaire? And she said, well, you know, if you want to become a billionaire, you have to solve a billion dollar problem. You have to, you create like a billion dollars worth of value. That's how you become a billionaire. And like it's true in any business, whatever size you grow to, the, the revenue your business um, creates 
is a measure of the value that you're providing to your customers. So one thing that really changed for me when I brought my business online and started to serve customers and clients online is I was no longer re restricted by geography. Back in the days of my sales training, um, the furthest I flew to do sales training was to Egypt and Kuwait. But, you know, there were, there were people, for example, in Australia who were never going to get the benefits of what I had to offer unless I flew there or they flew to me. And so we were really restric restricted by geography. These days, um, I have clients in over 60 countries worldwide. So I'm able to serve a truly global audience 24-7, 365 days of the year. Now, it's the same as if a retail shop suddenly increases its opening hours. Your revenue is going to increase because you're now available to do business in more hours. But being available to do business doesn't mean that I'm on my laptop 24-7. Not at all. I have a business that makes me money in my sleep. And you can have this business too. So um, if you like um, what I've said to you so far about an online business and you're thinking, excuse me, <clears throat> you're thinking, okay, Bernadette, I can see those are some advantages. Maybe it's time for me to check this out and take a look, at, a closer look at what I could do in 2017 to get up and running in an online business. I'd love you to join me on a webinar. So you know I mentioned I did a webinar this week. Well, we recorded it and we've got such amazing feedback on the webinar. I know I want to get give it to more people. So there is a link that hopefully, <laughs> power of technology, um, my team has either posted in the chat below this video um, or we'll manage to put it in the, we'll manage to put it somewhere. We'll figure it out. There's the link. And uh, you can come and register to see the replay of the webinar and where I go into much more detail about, you know, once you know that an online business is something that you're interested in creating, how do you go about it? What are, the, what are the five stages of an online business and what are the key milestones at each stage of the business? Um, what are the two numbers you absolutely must track um, if, to grow your business exponentially? I also talk about growing your list and the four things that you need to do to grow your list. And I share one of my favorite strat traffic strategies. So it's um, the three main ways you can get traffic, but I actually show uh, in the webinar, this, you'll love this, it is something I did three years ago, and it was a video that I created that took six minutes to film. And then I uploaded the video, and I'll show you exactly where I uploaded it and how I uploaded it. And since then, that video has had over 200,000 views online, but more importantly, it's been bringing a steady stream of people back to my website. And I now have hundreds of those videos, you won't be surprised to hear. So I wanna show you about some of the things that I've done to, to to get to the point that my business is at. So this is about a lot more than going, hey, this is a lovely business. I actually want to get, dig in and show you some of the specific things that I've done. We're also going to be talking about sales conversion, online sales conversion, and what you need to do so that you can increase the amount of people, or the amount of money that people spend with you. You're going to be really surprised with what I have to share with you around that because um, the even people have been following me for a long time you wouldn't necessarily know some of the things that go on behind the scenes in my business to keep those numbers up. So um, some great content there. And um, what was the last thing that we did? We talked about sales conversion and, uh, oh, my story. Yeah, so actually I could break it all down from how I got started with no list and no product and actually take you through almost like year by year so you can see how the business grew. Because what I want to do with this uh, webinar, or, or my intention for you in this webinar, is to really simplify what you need to get started online and really give you a clear roadmap. Um, because I think that these days, um, although there's a lot more options available to get started online, it's actually a lot more confusing than it was when I started out 15 years ago. And what my intention is, is to really simplify it and to get you to realise, yes, you can do this. Like, even if it feels overwhelming from right now to for you to be able to see actually there is a sequence of steps here there's a logic to this it's not just spray and pray there is a sequence that you can follow a series of steps when you do it in the right order and that's why they'll be talking about those five stages of business that will really make a difference so um if you like the sound of that i would love it if you would come and 
register to get the replay of the webinar. Um, it's only going to be up for a short time, so come over and see it. And also make sure to check back in on the live streams. Um, I'm going to be here every day. <laughs> um, not for the 12 days of Christmas, but I will be here for the next, um, I think I've got five or five or six episodes in total. I'm sorry, my maths isn't right, very good right now. Um, but yeah, I'll be here and uh, I'd love to, you know, connect with you and answer any questions that are coming up. So with no further ado, let um, us see what we've got in terms of questions. So Penny Pitstop um, and Caroline is saying, don't forget to answer her question. Thank you, Caroline. Caroline's like star super PA. She keeps me on track, which is not always easy, let me tell you. So um, Penny says, how many pages roughly does an ebook need to have? Brilliant question, Penny. And here is the answer. As many pages as you need to fulfill the promise that you're making with your ebook. So um, when I created my ebook, do you remember I said when I actually sat down, I got really clear. It took me three days to uh, write it. I had been working on my ebook for months before that. Has anybody else got projects like that? You know the things that you're working on? <laughs> you're not really making any real progress? Uh-uh, that was me. Um, one of the problems that I had was when I was sitting down to write the ebook, I was attempting to capture every single thing that I knew about being a client magnet and having clients seek me out. This was one of the things I'd managed to do in my sales training business and people were like how do I get established in my business like you Bernadette show me how to get all those clients so when I was trying to write everything uh, it was overwhelming there was no way I could capture all of my life's experience into one ebook when I changed the focus for the ebook and I said right what is the purpose of this ebook so the ebook was called the emergency action plan for attracting clients fast and they asked a different question so what needs to be in this ebook to help the people who buy it get the result that I'm promising, get clients fast. And yeah, there was a bit of background knowledge. There were some assignments and things that they needed to work through. There were decisions that they needed to make that I needed to facilitate through the ebook. There were some steps that they needed to follow. And so my ebook covered all of those things. I think by the time I was done, I've got a feeling that ebook was about 120 pages. But the length of the ebook, the value to the end user is not how many pages are in the ebook, it's actually what those pages do for them. And if you think about it, these days we're so time pressed, you can actually charge more for something that gives more specific guidance in a small chunk that's easier to consume than you could for offering, you know, encyclopedias worth. So again, and all the time, I love this question, it always comes down to um, the value that you're creating for the customer. Now, another great question from Che, who says, aren't you scared your ebook will be copied and spread over the web? The answer is no, I'm not scared, but they, um, what you're talking about is a fear that stops a lot of people. And I hate to say it, but um, I have found that copies I've created, not just of my ebook, I had a, a program a few years ago, which was a thousand dollar project to get hold of a copy and they were uploading it to a site and they, they were selling, they were selling my program at a discounted price. So um, look, it does go on, but I decided um, several years ago, I had to make a decision. I'm like, where am I gonna put my attention? Am I going to be driven by fear or by faith? So fear, scarcity, ooh, they're going to copy my stuff. They're going to steal it. There won't be enough for me. That is scarcity thinking. And um, you cannot let that hold you back. So I chose to take a different stance, which was, you know what? No matter what I do, no matter how well I protect this and have copyright um, boundaries and, um, and, and, and put things in place to make sure that things can't be copied. Um, I just have to trust that there's a bigger group of people that really value service, you know, that just uh, that, that and are willing to pay, that aren't cheats. So like, my, my model of the world is that when people are coming from that place of scarcity, I actually feel more compassion for them than judgment, to be honest, because 
it's showing me how small their worldview is, that they don't believe in themselves enough that they have to steal from what someone else has created, which is actually really rather sad. Now, so that's, that's just the sort of philosophical answer. There is also something else, and um, which day will we be talking about this on the information? I can't, I can't remember. I'll cover it on an upcoming live stream. Which is, the value that people get from you isn't just the information you provide, it's who you are being. So, um, if, if I honestly believed that all I was selling through my business, or providing through my business, was information then yeah, that would be a concern because you will, information is a commodity. Anybody can cut and paste that and, and they're in business. However, what my business is about is inspiration. And I know the value that I bring when, to my clients is um, the, the Bernadette magic. <laughs> that, you know, that people tell me this over, I don't mean to sound arrogant, that this is feedback I've had. Okay, I'm gonna just own it, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it's not arrogant. It's not arrogant to say it. This this is genuinely what people have told me. Bernadette, you're an inspiration. And I know I've inspired people who haven't even become paying customers, but you know, they, they've heard my story, they've seen what I've achieved as a single mum, that I've grown a million dollar online business. And so there's inspiration there. Now, you tell me, who's gonna nick that? Who's gonna steal that from me? That can't be done. Another thing that I do in my information business is I make sure that we're providing resources for my clients around implementation. So that means on my paid programs, we provide Facebook groups, we have live events, we, ha we have ways that people can gather and network and connect. We actually give people challenges to make sure that they get stuff done. We create those kind of structures. So it's a lot more than information. So that's a great question. Um, that's a great question from Shay. Um, and you can see that this is actually, I'm talking about an information business, but it's a lot more than that. So Teresa is asking, let me just take another cup of tea, and a slurp of tea. Any tips on naming your business? Um, well, yes, I do. The first, of, the first thing to say is um, the name of the business is not as important as people uh, might think to get started because a name can always be changed. And this is one of the things that um, I noticed. I said there are five stages of business and I'm gonna be talking about that on an upcoming live stream. And I do go into more detail on that on the webinar. If you wanna go and check that out, you'll be able to get the whole, the whole goodies today. Um, but in the, in the five stages, um, when you're getting, st before you sort of, when you're really just getting ready to get going, the most important questions to ask are, not what will the name be and what will my what will my um, website be. You really need to be focusing on who are you going to serve, what is it that they need, what um, evidence you have that they want and are willing to pay for what you need to offer. Those are the far more important questions. And one of the things that I've noticed is that sometimes people hide in the website and the branding and the name. I'm not saying that you're doing this, Teresa, but I'm just, I wanted to kind of uh, speak to what I've observed sometimes as a pattern. And it's, uh, um, a name can be changed. So, like, it, it, I, I would try to pick a name that, that reflects the people that you're serving and how you would serve them. So, um, my first online business was, is called clientmagnets.com. And that name came to me in the summer of 2001 when I was first looking to start getting online. And um, in hindsight, it was a good name to go for because Client Magnets described who it was for, for people who wanted to be a Client Magnet. So there was an aspirational element of the title. But also we were managing to capture in the name um, how it helps people. So you, there's gonna be clients, but through magnetic attraction of clients, not through client chasing. So um, I, that's what I would focus on when it comes to naming your business, is how you can convey who you're looking to help and how you help them. Um, oh, Imogen, there you go. Oh, <laughs> Imogen, that's really moved me what you've written there. 
Um, and Imogen says, uh, you inspired me to break the six figures back in 2011. So I I'm delighted for you. Congratulations. And thanks for giving me that feedback <laughs> five years on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that that is a wonderful thing about this business to know that you're reaching and connecting with people all around the world. Sometimes people that you might never meet. And yet you, you, your word or, you know, a video or something you've created has made a difference. So if we have any more questions, um, I will stick around. But for now, it looks like uh, we are there. Thank you to Caroline. Yeah, like, looks like we're done. So um, I hope this has inspired you. I hope it's given you something to think about. I hope you're now really putting on your radar whether you should be in an online business, starting an online business, or what you could be doing to improve and grow your online business. And as I said, if you want to know more, what I'd love you to do is come and see the replay of the webinar that I did this week. And there is a link somewhere around me. <laughs> I don't know, I can't see what's on your screen, but somewhere there's a link and come and watch the webinar. I've got so much ju juicy content. It's about 90 minutes long you'll love it. If you like this live stream, you're going to love that. So um, that's it from me. Thank you for hanging out with me this lunchtime. I feel less like a newsreader now. I feel a bit more like probably loose women <laughs> or a loose woman. Um, and I'll be back tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let's connect again. And tomorrow I'll be talking to you five stages of an online business and how to know which stage you're at. And crucially, what are the important things to focus on for the stage you're at? So thank you so much for joining me today. And I shall see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. If you're still here watching, why are you here? Why haven't you gone to my um, webinar replay page yet and signed up to watch the webinar? Off you go. You do that.